vegetable breeding at Lubera. Lubera is specialized on breeding berries and fruits and now new also on breeding vegetables. Welcome to Gardeners Radio by Lubera Edibles, the podcast for professional gardeners. We are talking about edible plants. My name is Frederik Vollert. I work at Lubera Edibles and I'm responsible for product development. And I welcome today <coughs> Markus Kobold. Yeah, my, my name is Markus Kobold. I'm f uh, one of the co-founders of Lubera Edibles. My partner, uh, Rupert Meyer, is not here on the table. Somebody has to work, not only to talk. <laughs> and uh, I'm also founder of Lubera and breeder there. I'm at Lubera, I'm responsible for about almost everything and especially for breeding. So we are producing all the stuff then where uh, Frederick is choosing the varieties he's now uh, afterwards selling as young plants to professional producers uh, somewhere in Europe. So Marcus, you are breeding apples for, uh, now, for since now about, for about more than uh, 25 years. 25 30 years. 30 years almost, yeah. And uh, then after apples, there came uh, raspberries and also um, black, and uh, black, white and red currants. And now new, you are doing also on vegetables. How does it came? Yes. What do you think? It's an upgrading or a downgrading? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in uh, assortment uh, policy, I think it's uh, it's an upgrade. Okay, well, it's more. No, we, I, I know uh, many people in in the in the plant business, especially in the woody plants, they are thinking about uh, the non woody plants as a little bit minor plants. So, so why can you go from apples to uh, to uh, kale? Uh, and uh, for them it's a downgrading but you know our love for plants goes uh, through our stomach so uh, our plant love is is, is an eating love and uh, before we are eating uh, vegetables we have to grow them and to breed them and so that may be one of the reasons now we are uh, breeding edible plants which is also in the name of our young plant company uh, Lubero Edibles so uh, that's that's the common thing And uh, why did we do, came to other plants? That's step by step. Uh, in the end, we, we found out that our way of breeding is very special. So the, the way of breeding we developed in the last 25, 30 years in, in, um, in uh, fruits and berries. There are more breeding programs than you mentioned. Yeah? Almost everything in fruit and berries we are doing, apples and a little bit stone fruit and pears and almost all berry types, also minor berry uh, 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 varieties. So what we developed is a way of, of breeding, especially for the home garden market. That that seems to be very easy. And is it, perhaps it's, it's also easy, but nobody's doing it. So uh, most breeding programs in the world in the last 200 years, 150 years, uh, uh, were concentrated on the professional growing. They were breeding for the professional fruit business, for the professional vegetable business. And that's the reason they developed the variety they developed. And uh, at the beginning of uh, this development, there was not really a home garden market. Home gardens were small farms. And nowadays, home gardens, especially in Middle Europe, in UK, in Ireland, in uh, German-speaking countries, in France, uh, in some East European countries, The garden is something special. Yeah, it's, it's not really a small farm anymore. And we are breeding for the home garden. So for the home garden, we are breeding plants which are resistant, as resistant as possible, which are easy to grow because the home gardener has other things to do, not only to garden. He's not a, he's not a farmer. And um, it's an important uh, but a minor thing uh, in, 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 in his daily business. And of course... Uh, um, Edible home garden plants have to, 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 to have a very good eating quality. So these are the three. Uh, the, the, the kilograms you are, you are taking from a meter square or from a, from a tree are not so important. Yeah, it, it must be a decent amount of, of fruits, of berries, of vegetables, but it's not so important. 
uh, some kilograms more or less. And also uh, storage life, transportability, pickability, all these uh, perhaps also sometimes color are not so important like in the professional fruit growing. And uh, that's the reason that when you're concentrating on the home garden market, you have a 100% other perspective, especially with some crops, as if you are breeding for the professional garden. And this special perspective we are now developing also in the, in the vegetable business. But are there differences between breeding uh, fruits or berries and uh, vegetables? Or is it uh, nearly or almost the same? No, from the perspective, there is no, no difference. And it's all about sex between plants. And, uh, and it's uh, uh, about compatibility or not compatibility if you are doing some riskier things. Perhaps the main difference is that uh, uh, in vegetables, as they were developed in the last 200 years, uh, seed propagated varieties are more important. And in, in uh, fruits and berries, Uh, uh, vegetatively propagated varieties are more important and since we have learned to work with vegetatively propagated varieties we are now more uh, we are trying more to develop also in vegetables vegetatively propagated varieties that's perhaps uh, a difference that's not to say that vegetatively propagated varieties are better than seed propagated varieties it's just we know more about it and we are better in it and so we're working and in some cases Uh, it could be a, a time thing that uh, uh, we can we can faster breeding, making faster progress uh, by a vegetatively oriented program than in a seed oriented program. And uh, how do you choose uh, um, groups of plants you are breeding on? Is it just uh, you walk up in the morning and say, oh, I will breeding potatoes or I will breeding... Um, yeah, so sometimes it's like this <laughs> because, uh, you know, it, it's all about experiences. So uh, I, I remember the day I was uh, visiting a breeding program, very interesting breeding program at the University of Göttingen, which at that time was specialized on open air tomatoes on the field. And uh, after this visit, it, it was clear for me we have to do and not potatoes, uh, tomatoes. Uh, uh, after this visit, it was clear for me, we have to do tomatoes. At that time, nobody in my company was thinking about tomatoes. So uh, I, I, even I had about two years to bring them towards <laughs> tomatoes because uh, it was so far for them. So, so uh, But for me, it was clear it's about experience. And then, of course, we are concentrating more on, 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 on how do you say... Uh, the, the contrary of cheap, cheap, more expensive, more expensive plants, of course. Uh, we, we are concentrating more on plants where you have a young plant stage. So the, the consumers are able to buy a young plant and then they grow them further. And even this young plant can have two stages. So it's from a young plant company who is doing a, a, a little small seedling plant. And then the, the, the real grower, our customer, the customer of Lubia Edibles is then growing a, a really bigger young plants for consumers. So um, if we have room for these stages, if it's possible to, 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 to produce these adding uh, values, then uh, it's more interesting for us to, to develop a breeding program than when there is no room. So I think with salad plants, we would have a little bit of problem. And so, so do you mean um, vegetatively propagated uh, plants are also um, important for you in vegetables? Yes, we, we think so. So, so um, potatoes, for example, we are developing, we hope in the future, a huge range of very diverse potatoes all with uh, early and late blight resistance. And, uh, and there it's, it's no difference if we are starting with vegetatively propagated plants or with seed potatoes. And if it's easier for us to start with, uh, with, uh, with cuttings, we will produce cuttings. Yeah. And uh, in, in tomatoes, it's a little bit more complicated because all, all breeding systems in tomatoes are, 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 are based on, on uh, inbreeding lines for stable seed varieties and for uh, F1 hybrid uh, breeding. And we try to develop uh, vegetatively propagated clonal plants. 
So that gives us the advantage that you can uh, select genotypes on an earlier stage, so much faster. We can go on breeding with them uh, very fast, so breeding all the traits in it. And uh, we have uh, more diversity uh, faster in the program than we are working with inbreeding lines. So it's more, uh, uh, how do you say, a uh, strategic uh, 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 thing we are, we are choosing in tomatoes. But to, to be honest, in tomatoes, we don't really know if in five years we, we are really producing a vegetatively propagated variety assortment, but there is a good chance. If not, we are producing seed propagated varieties. Mm -hmm. But the first goal is to, to, to also in aubergines, to develop vegetatively propagated uh, uh, breeding lines. And uh, today, how, how look your um, breeding uh, assortments uh, look like today? Our portfolio of, of, uh, of breeding programs is rather easy. We have three groups. We have uh, fruits of the roots. So it's uh, tuber plants like potatoes. So that's perhaps the biggest program where we go very deep. We have as a small program we have started two years ago with uh, sweet potatoes, where you will very fast see some results. And uh, it, it was not so easy to, to start a breeding program because we don't like to set seeds, but we were, we were uh, successful in it. And uh, yeah, we want to, to, to uh, develop varieties for northern climates, more diversity, more color, more sugar also. If I want a sweet potato, I want the sugar one and not a not normal potato. We are looking a little bit at Oka, Oxalis tuberosa. So that's that's uh, fruits of the roots. Then we have the, the fruit vegetables like tomatoes, aubergine. Uh, tomato is there, the biggest program will be. It's a rather long way to go. Our breeding goal there is, is open air tomatoes. So <coughs> open air tomatoes mean? Uh, you can grow them everywhere without protection. Oh. Also in our northern climate, we are not interested in it. I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I think because potatoes were grown, especially in the south, and they were grown also here in the north uh, with protection. Nobody or not enough people were working on open air tomatoes. And um, so we think, we think that's, that's a, a, a really interesting goal that a home gardener can plant a tomato somewhere in his garden and he can earn a decent amount of fruits. That's the goal and also diversity in this program. It sounds very good and in, interesting. And uh, the, the, third, the, third, the third group is uh, ever veg, perennial vegetables. Uh, there, for the moment, we are only working with uh, rhubarb. So we have a rather big rhubarb pro breeding program. And there we have learned if you start uh, uh, breeding with a rather old crop, there is not so much breeding at the moment, or almost no breeding at the moment, you, you have the chance to develop many new things, things you wouldn't, wouldn't expect, or we didn't expect when we started the program. So I think that could also be an interesting way. For the moment, it's uh, 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 only rhubarbs. Many people in our company hope that it will stay with rhubarb. <laughs> We have enough breeding programs, and uh, but I'm sure in the future we will also look uh, at other uh, average crops. And what do you think when you got uh, the first results, um, the first results for for you for Lubera and also for the customers of uh, Lubera Edibles? Yeah, norm normally we are developing first varieties for Lubera.com, so we are trying our new varieties directly with end consumers, uh, uh, with our direct to consumer business. And then we are deciding which varieties could be on which breeding programs, uh, breeding lines could be interesting for the professional market to produce professional young plants for other gardeners to produce finished young plants for consumers. So uh, to to uh, to have a result there, it will be about between three and five years, and perhaps more at five years than on three years. And uh, almost sure the first results will be in potatoes. Okay. Okay, thank you, Markus. So now, now we are finished for today. And yeah, thank you, Markus, 
and um, if you have questions or comments, uh, you can uh, send it directly to me, to uh, frederick.follard at luberedibles.com. And our podcast series will uh, go on with uh, the next um, podcast. We will talk about cassissima and confit berries, uh, so uh, blackcurrant and just a berry. Thank you for listening to our podcast and have a fruitful day. Go on gardening. Thanks for hearing Gardens Radio by Lubero Edibles. You find us on every platform for podcasts, Spotify, Apple, and of course, on our website, www.luberoedibles.com. Go on gardening.